Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Frederick Edward Fabelia and I will be discussing intelligence testing, which is a continuation of the topic on intelligence. Okay, so let us begin. So it was Alfred Binet who coined the term intelligence quotient or IQ. So who was Alfred Binet? During the early 1900s, the French government asked Binet to help decide which students were most likely to experience difficulty in school. The government had passed laws requiring that all French children attend school. So it was important to find a way to identify children who would need specialized assistance. Okay, so Binet quickly realized that some children were able to answer more advanced questions than older children were generally able to answer and vice versa. Based on this observation, Binet suggested the concept of mental age or a measure of intelligence based on the average abilities of children of a certain age group. Okay, so Binet and his colleague Theodore Simon began to develop a specific set of questions that focused on areas such as memory and problem-solving skills. The Binet-Simon scale of 1905 comprised 30 items designed to measure judgment, comprehension, and reasoning, which Binet deemed the key characteristics of intelligence. So look at the sample IQ question, which is included in the Binet-Simon scale. So if you look at the question mark, what do you think is the shape that is the best answer that will fit in that pattern or that sequence? All right. So you can choose from letters A, B, C, and D. All right. Okay, so this is just a sample question. The Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale. So when did this come up? When the Binet Simon scale made its way to the United States, Stanford psychologist Louis Terman adapted the test for American students and published the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale in 1916. The Stanford Binet Scale is a contemporary assessment which measures intelligence according to five features of cognitive ability, including fluid reasoning, knowledge, quantitative reasoning, visual spatial processing, and working memory. Both verbal and nonverbal responses are measured by this test. Okay, so the evolution is clear no? from, from Alfred Binet and then now we have Stanford Binet, which is the adapted test in the United States. Okay, so what is the intelligence quotient? It is represented and calculated by this formula. Okay, so IQ equals mental age divided by chronological age times 100. So if you are 25 years old, uh, there must be an assessment to find out what your mental age is. Do you think like a 25-year-old a or someone younger or someone older? Okay, and then you multiply that by 100. Let's take a look at an example. If an individual is 18 years old but has the intellectual capacity of a 9-year-old, then his IQ would be, so using the formula, you divide the mental age, which is 9, over chronological age, which is 18, so that I think is 0.5, and then you multiply that by 100. So the IQ is 50. Okay, is that good or bad? I don't think that's a good uh, IQ score because it's lower than what you should have if you are 18 years old, all right? Okay, so let's now go to another kind of intelligence test, the Weschler Intelligence Scale developed by David Weschler. Okay, so building on the Stanford Binet test, American psychologist David Weschler created a new measurement instrument. Much like Binet, Weschler believed that intelligence involved different mental abilities. But he was dissatisfied with the limitations of the Stanford Binet scale. 
So he published his new intelligence test known as the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale or WAIS in 1955. Okay. So what is the Weschler Adult, Adult Intelligence Scale or WAIS? So there is now a version 4 which contains 10 subtests along with five supplemental tests. The test provides scores in four major areas of intelligence. First, verbal comprehension. Second, perceptual reasoning. Third, working memory. And fourth, processing speed. Okay, so if we look at this diagram, you will see here what, are the, what is the distribution of the items in the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale. So you have the verbal comprehension scale, working memory scale, perceptual reasoning scale, and processing speed scale. Okay. The overall IQ combines the test taker's performance in all four categories. And rather than calculating this number based on mental and chronological age, the WISE compares the individual score to the average score at that level as calculated by the standardization process. Okay, So if you look at this uh, normal curve, you will see here the distribution of IQ scores depending on how high or how low the score is. So if your average score is uh, expected to be uh, more frequent or higher in frequency within the population. So, uh, so IQ scores that are higher uh, tend to be lower in frequency because there are uh, not that many very smart people or geniuses around. At the same time, there are not that many, uh, what do you call that, people with low IQ in the population. So average IQ score, which is around 100, has the highest frequency. That's why intelligence can be represented, represented by what is called a normal curve. Okay? So that ends our discussion on intelligence testing. Thank you very much.